I think, been passed. And if we try to sum up what is it possible, <coughs> what makes Phoenix to work, you could say that it is a combination of good people and a good idea. And if you combine that with some <coughs> Letters, you could you could get it into this formulation F E F E F E F E, which is a form of a double helix, where it could be expressed as formidable egos plus finite elements for everything, for everyone, forever, and so on. So, I think this is the reason why Phoenix can work: good people and a good idea. And evidently Phoenix is now coming up on YouTube, so this was my suggestion. And um, there is a Swede uh, who has become famous on YouTube, Hans Rosling, presenting basically a graphical visual package for displaying data on a two-dimensional screen, moving around. And he's now traveling the world selling this uh, visual, uh, fairly simple tool and ideas about that the world is getting better, which is uh, welcome by many people. And one, so we will not go into that, but you can go to YouTube and, and look, about, <coughs> look at his uh, lecture, which is really interesting. It is really a Swedish lecture, uh, then made famous with lots of views around the world. So it's an interesting aspect of Swedish mentality. Okay, now to the experiment. So now this was just about Phoenix, and there is a null about Phoenix as well, specifically the Phoenix project you can see here. Um, I have collected the nodes in something called my book of nodes. And here the nodes are listed under various themes. Philosophy, mathematics, mathematics, science, education, Newtonian mechanics, fluid mechanics, thermodynamics, quantum mechanics, theory of relativity, economy, and applications. And I would now just make the experiment as uh, a test of freedom of thought. So I will now present some of the nodes under these headlines, and I hope that you can then point to something that you are interested in as a general audience and we see how it works. So this is what people meet when they open this My Book of Knowles, which has many viewers. Um, and um, it is a test then how you can present a message of what computer what computation can reveal about various aspects of our existence. So, are you, is someone interested in philosophy of science, for example? So we have various things here. Uh, for example, that Descartes is returning. And the idea is that the soul is a simulation of, of the body. That is the essence of soul to be some form of simulation of a material reality. Uh, so you can play on that. Um, it connects to what the soul is, uh, or even the world. Is everything that happens in the world a form of analog computation, which can be simulated in the soul in some other form of digital or analog computation? Um, there is an old question of mo particle motion, how motion is possible. And you know that Zeno, 2000 years, 2000 <coughs> more than 2000 years ago, uh, presented the paradox of motion. How is motion possible when the, the arrow at each instant is still? And this is still unresolved. And if you look in, in math and physics books, you get no good answer why motion is possible. So this is one thing that we could answer by mathematics and computation. 
And um, there is one other aspect here, what I think concerning science is the role of cartoons in science. Um, the idea is that the cartoon tells the truth, which cannot be told directly because it is too cruel, an unacceptable truth. So if you want to know the truth about science and scientists, you look at cartoons and they will tell you the truth. So let me just take one example here because there are, and of course Gary Larson is, is one of the, of, he has many scientific cartoons. A typical one is this one. Two scientists, quantum <coughs> physicists, are writing, sitting on the board, and then one says to the other, look at that Schuster. Dogs are so cute when they try to comprehend quantum mechanics. And the dog is apparently not comprehending quantum mechanics. But of course the funny thing with this is that the professors, the guys, the physicists here, they don't comprehend either. This is sort of the funny thing. And uh, so it is, it is true, nobody understands quantum mechanics. This is generally acknowledged uh, as a sign of high level understanding. Uh, we take another, we take... How is Einstein, the, e <coughs> the greatest ego of science, presented? What is the truth about Einstein? Well, in cartoons, he's presented as being stupid, unhappy, and alone. And there are endless cartoons with this message. And they are all very funny. Uh, and they are funny because they are true. Because a cartoon is true. This is what makes it funny, that it's true. Uh, so, that is one aspect of science that just briefly would then you can go through other, other scientists. Um, the question is what we should take. We should take one, one example of, um, let's say, there is lots of philosophy, there is the teaching about mathematics, um, there is about fluid mechanics, uh, there is D'Alembert's paradox, um, flow separation. This this known has has had many readers. It is called flow separation and divorce cost. So usually there are lots of uh, readers of this because evidently there are lots of couples. Uh, contemplating divorce, so they go to this. But this is about an aspect of flow separation. What makes it difficult for a flow to separate from a surface once it has attached? And this is also the essence behind why it is possible to fly. That a flow does not separate on top of an airfoil because it cannot separate. <coughs> Separation has a certain cost, and the cost is drag and low pressure. And so that is an aspect of um, presentation where, you, where I try to present a new fluid dynamics phenomenon discovered by computation and put it into some perspective to get some more readers. Um, if you Go to more technical things. We could just take one, except one, maybe of the of many applications. Um, and now you will be free to to choose one. 